Hey everybody, today we're going to restore a Wilton Mechanics Vice. This one, uh, you've seen it's, it's had better days, but it's still in fairly good working order, luckily. Uh, this is not one of Wilton's more famous vices. You may have heard of the Wilton Bullet Vice or the Wilton Mechanics Vice. That's not this. This is a little more down market than that. The The Bullet Vices are made with 60,000 PSI castings. I believe this is only 30,000, which isn't bad, but it's not 60, that's for sure. Uh, luckily, this one's also made in the USA like the uh, the Bullet Vices. Although I'm not sure how much longer that's going to be the case. There's talk that Wilton's moving everything offshore. I hope not. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we're going to strip this down, give it a nice green paint, uh, uh, Verde green paint from rust which is close to the original paint code on these guys. Uh, this one you see also made in USA. Make sure that's, they stamped it in there twice, in fact. You can, see me pointing, you can see me pointing at it there in two locations. You want to make sure that you know that. And so we do. Right, next up, we've got to take a look at the jaws on this thing. And you can see this one's pretty chewed up. In fact, I had to drill this out. Look where I'm pointing there. I had to, uh, someone, I don't know how they did this, but they managed to crush it around the screw hole there so it wouldn't unscrew. The screw wouldn't come out, so I had to drill it out. I've got a separate video showing how I did that. I'll link to it in the description. It's just, you know, how to drill a stubborn bolt out of its hole without ruining the threads. Uh, so I'll put a link down there. So this thing's gone. Besides, even if that weren't the case, this thing's so chewed up and beat up. It's just worthwhile to spend, say, $25 at Zero Tools and get get a replacement. Also, look at this one. This is a homemade jaw they've got in there, some smooth face piece of metal. They put some holes in and drilled things. It's just totally, totally ruined. So we're just going to get new jaws and go that route. Now, well, besides the jaws, another problem on this is you can see a small hairline crack going from the center of the anvil out to the edge. Uh, it turns out the anvil on this in the center where that little divot is, that's only about a quarter of an inch thick, which is really surprising. It's very thin, so no wonder it cracked. I'm not sure why Wilton did that. But what we're going to do is we're just going to grind out a little channel there using a Dremel and a cutoff wheel, small channel, so that we can fill in that way with a MIG welder. And when we do that, we'll just smooth it out with some fiberglass body filler to hide it. We'll also use some fiberglass body filler to take care of some of the really deep divots and things like that on the on the um, horns and things like that, places like that, so we get a nice smooth finish. We'll also touch up on the anvil itself. We'll use the MIG welder, touch up some of the deeper dings and things, and we'll smooth that out with some filler and then paint that silver. Just to, If you don't paint it, it's just going to look terrible, so uh, we'll take care of that as well. All right, last but not least, we got to take care of the handle. Again, I'm going to get a replacement bar for this. I know somebody, and I'll put a link to his website, who can do a replacement piece of rod with threaded ends on both ends for about $30, $40. This one, you could, I mean, it's bent for one thing, which isn't great. And you could, and it's got a bunch of dings and divots in there. Now, I could take some body filler and smooth that stuff out and paint it. And I've done that before, but when it's in the screw like that, it's very difficult to paint these things because you you can't you have to paint it in halves and you always wind up with a tape line down the middle or wherever you decide to do one half versus the other. So it's, it's a real pain. This thing's so chewed up, it's just not worth it. So we're going to get a new bar in there. We'll show how to do that. It's going to look great. Uh, so stick around. We're going to get this thing going. Oh, we've got a couple of pipe jaws in there as well. Big deal. Uh, those are fine. Um, so stick around. We're going to have a lot of fun with this. All right, first order of business is to clean this thing up, get it ready for welding. I'm not going to, I'm going to spare you the tedium watching me strip this thing down with a wire wheel on an angle grinder. You guys know the drill on this sort of thing. Just get every part you can. Lean in. It takes about 30, 40 minutes once you do all the nooks and crannies. If you wanted to, you could use some aircraft stripper, you know, some sort of paint stripping liquid. That works fine too, whatever whatever gets the job done. And when I'm done with that, I'm going to start tackling that anvil bit. Like I mentioned, I'm going to get my Dremel out, put a small cutoff wheel on there, and just dig a small channel from where the crack begins to where it ends. Then we're just going to fill it in with the MIG welder. Nothing fancy here. After doing that, the anvil is not going to be... Um, it'll be usable, but I'm going to paint it, so it won't really be all that usable because you'll chip the paint, but it's going to look so much better than it does now. So stick around, we'll take a look at that in just a sec. Let's do a quick progress update here, shall we? So I took out the MIG welder. Well, before that, I took my Dremel with a cutoff wheel and ground a small little channel along the crack just to give uh, a little more play to work with when you're welding. Um, so what I did was then I took a MIG welder, tacked up the crack, filled it in. You can see then I ground down the weld, so the crack's fixed. I also did a quick tacking with the MIG welder on the underside here where the crack had gone through just to toughen things up there. Now, that, this weld job is nothing that a professional welder could be proud of, <laughs> but uh, it's good enough. It'll work out fine. I also took the MIG welder and tacked up some of the worst of the dings and dents in here. You can see the spots here. Then I ground those down. Next up, I'm going to take some epoxy fiberglass body filler, 
lay a skim coat on here and smooth things out. Uh, doing that, you don't want to use the anvil after that because you don't want to hammer on body filler. That's not what it's meant for. So I'll paint the anvil and just keep it there as decorative rather than use it as any sort of actual anvil thing. In fact, I don't know if I would ever do that anyway. This anvil is surprisingly thin on the underside. If, if you take a look on there, you can you can tell it's just really thin stuff. I'm surprised Wilton did this. Uh, any sort of vice anvil really isn't meant to be hammered on anyway, so I won't use it anymore for that purpose. Otherwise, start of the paint stripping process. I'm using a die grinder with a paint stripping wheel on it. That works well. And there's plenty more to go though, as you can see here. So we'll continue along that way and report back in just a bit. Here's a little more of a close-up of what we did. You can see it's the crack's been smoothed out. We've got our plugs in there again. We're going to take a little bit of fiberglass body filler, smooth everything out. It's going to look terrific. Then we're going to hit it up with that paint, that Verde Green Rust-Oleum I mentioned. After that, we're going to hit it with clear coat uh, to give it that extra toughness. Uh, the anvil itself, however, we're going to paint silver just to give it a little contrast. So it's going to look terrific. It's going to be nice and strong. Uh, looking forward to it. But next up, we got to take care of some other business, namely uh, that handle that was looking pretty bad. All right, meantime, we've got the pipe jaws, the lockdown tabs, and the main screw. Uh, I'm gonna, as far as the pipe jaws go, I'm just going to dunk them in vinegar for a day or so, get the rust off, clean them up as best I can. I don't plan to use the pipe jaws very much, and they're not in terrible shape, unlike the main jaws on this thing that we saw. So I'll just put those back in place. I've got a dedicated pipe jaw, uh, uh, sorry, pipe vice for grabbing on a pipe, so I'm not going to use these guys too much for that purpose. Lockdown tabs. Clean those off as well. Uh, we're going to paint those silver. Uh, and then we've got the main handle. What I'm going to do is paint the main handle screw silver. And again, we've got the special threaded rod coming in. We'll keep that bare steel. It's going to look great. Uh, and it'll just we'll put that in again with a couple of brass knobs on both ends. That'll look terrific. But you know what? Before we do that, we've got to get this existing handle off. Take care of that. Move it out of the way. So why don't we do that next? Meanwhile, we've got the, the handle here. I mean, what a joke. I cut this thing off. It's just, it's bent. It's got too many dings and dents to really fix up properly. So we're going to spend 35 bucks, get that custom piece of threaded rod. Going to put a couple of uh, knobs on both ends, threaded knobs, bronze, uh, brass ones. It's going to look great. We'll take a look at it. But just, you can see this thing's just not worth saving. Notice here, what I've done is I've put a little body filler. I stripped the, the horn here. And what you can see, there's uh, the greenish section. That's that fiberglass body filler I was telling you about. You you get you mix up a little bit of it, smooth it on, then sand it off. You'll probably have to do a couple of sessions of this to really get it nice and smooth. But this guy and the other side had a lot of dings and dents, like most of the, actually almost <laughs> almost all of the vice had some dings and dents. So we smoothed out those sections in particular, sanded it down. It's going to look great. We're going to then coat this, paint this thing with some epoxy, uh, some epoxy primer. And then on top of that, again, we're going to put that Rust-Oleum Verde green paint on it and then we're going to hit it with clear coat just give it that extra shine that extra toughness the anvil itself again we're going to smooth that out also with the body filler but instead of the uh, green we're going to use some silver metallic paint on that again just to provide some contrast oh, that'll, that'll also get clear coated so it's going to be looking really good let's get started on that and we'll take a look at the finished result in just a minute well you look at that amazing what a little bit of paint and body filler will do for you look at that nice green shine that silver on the anvil, little clear coat on top, that looks great. One thing I'm going to do, I think, is I'm actually going to polish the anvil just to make it a little more scratch resistant. So what I'll do, I'll do a little 2000 grit wet sanding on it. I know this sounds a little bit of overkill. Put a small polishing pad on the Dremel, get some rubbing compound down there and smooth it out. So it'll be nice and smooth. That'll look great. It's already looking terrific though. We got the dynamic jaw painted up too as well. Painted the handle a nice silver color so we're going to put it all together and show what it looks like but meantime let's just take a quick walk through of what this particular section is uh, via video you can get a nice look of what the shine is on that anvil all right here we go take a look at that light off the anvil nice and shiny this is even before the clear coat went on in fact when i filmed this you can see that nice bend there so much better than before now it's not perfect there are a few nicks and dings as you can see as i draw the light across there but i mean it's an anvil for one thing it looks ten thousand times better than it did before yeah, very nice there. Also notice, if you would, the crack is gone. You can't see that anymore. Cover that up with the MIG welder and again with a little fiberglass body filler. It just works wonders. The green looks nice and shiny. It's just, uh, it's a nice it's a nice deal. Next, uh, we've also got, as mentioned, we've got the dynamic jaw painted. It's not in this video, but you, it looks the same. Looks great. We'll touch it up with the clear coat. 
Um, it's going to be perfect in just a bit. So stick around. We're going to get some final shots very soon. And before we do any final shots, let's talk about this handle I keep banging on about. Here's the old one again. Nicked up, cut up, bad shape. Just would have been a pain in the butt to try and fix this up. I've done it before. Again, with a lot of body filler and a lot of patience, you can do it. But this one's a little bent too. Uh, so forget it. It's just it's just too chewed up. If you do try to paint these things, um, first you got to fill in with a body filler there. And if you try to paint it, it's just a real, real hassle because it goes through the screw and you have to paint it in halves. You have to do the one half, mask everything off, then paint the other half back and forth. And you wind up with a tape line showing down the middle. Uh, and you have to blend that out. And it's just, you know, what, what a... What a pain. Just forget the whole thing in my view. Um, just get rid of that thing. Start over if you can. Get a piece of new rod, which we shall do in just a sec. And we're just going to take this thing and just say bye-bye to it and move on to the next thing. So, say goodbye. See ya. Alright, I was put in touch with a gentleman in central Massachusetts who runs a small machine shop, a fellow named Eric Costa. And he set me up with this. A nice piece of custom cut, custom length 4140 alloy steel with three-eighth inch threads on both sides. And what I did, and that's a half-inch uh, rod right there, so he cut that for me, put the threads on, half-inch depth, again, per my specifications, only charged about 35 bucks. And what I did was I got a couple of brass knobs there, threaded brass knobs from McMaster Car, and what we're going to do is we're going to thread those guys on on both ends, maybe put a little Loctite on them so they don't come flying off, put some rubber grommets on there to act as pinch guards, and we're in business. This thing looks nice and smooth. I'll put a link to Eric's website down below in case you want to do something similar. He also does other custom uh, machining work, uh, working on specifically on vintage um, nameplates, uh, vintage equipment, all kinds of stuff. Check him out. He's got a CNC machine he can use too. He's very, very reasonably priced, very quick turnaround. So thanks very much, Eric. I'm going to put this thing to great use. So let's get this thing in there and take a look at the final product. All right, here we go, the final product. Look at this. Nice and glossy clear coated all that stuff the anvil up there look at how smooth and shiny that is after a little polishing just looks great notice it's got a nice silver metallic there from summit racing that single stage urethane paint rust-oleum verde green looks terrific under the clear coat uh the crack that's long gone you can't tell that was ever there so that's terrific notice the lockdowns here i just stripped those to bare metal and put clear coat on them uh, they weren't nearly as badly beaten up as the main handle so there was no need to do any Fancy painting, I didn't think I needed to do that with them. Some clear coat is all. Again, they're not wearing near as bad as that thing that was chewed up. So those look great. Uh, painted the slide, also the same silver metallic color as the anvil, and also the handle there. And notice, again, here's the uh, here's that steel rod with the brass ends on it and the pinch guards. It looks great. 4140 steel, so it's very uh, fracture resistant. So again, thank you, Eric, for putting that together. Also, the main handle... Sprayed that the same silver metallic that I sprayed the anvil and the slides. That looks great. Again, clear-coated. Very tough finish. Very glossy. Got the new jaws in there from Zorro. 25 bucks. Hard to beat that. Those fit great. Yeah, so this is a finished restoration. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you enjoyed watching this. I hope it inspires you to do your own restorations. Even a piece of junk that this looked like at the beginning definitely can be restored. I also painted the, uh, the back there. Notice a little silver metallic as well just to class it up. So again, thanks a lot for watching this. Um, leave a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you like. I'll have some other restorations coming along soon. Uh, so again, thanks very much for watching, and I hope this uh, helps you with your own restorations.